I am back to share five more delicious recipes. What's up, guys? Kira here from 50 Shades of a Mom, tips for all shades of a mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you guys five more delicious recipes, and they are always super easy because these are from every plate. I absolutely love sharing these recipes with you guys because I feel like if you don't wanna go ahead and order the service, by me sharing these recipes with you as super simple as they are with very few ingredients, you guys can just go ahead and recreate these at home and just let me be the one that you get the recipes through. If you want to try every plate, I always have my link shared down below and it gets you guys $20 off your first box, which ultimately gets you three full recipes with two servings for just $9.99. So you cannot beat 10 bucks for three meals and you guys I love them when you see the meals that I have for you today you're gonna understand why I'm obsessed with them and why I use them as often as I do but no more jibber jabber let's get into today's recipes so first we're starting off with a sweet and tangy cherry meatball and I picked this because this felt like something that totally encompassed fall I thought cranberry how about you recreate this recipe at home, but use cranberry instead of cherry, and that just sounds so amazing to me. So you're gonna need some sour cream, two Yukon Gold potatoes, some soy sauce, and then here are the preserves. These are the cherry ones, and it's like one of those real preserves that you would get like in a fruit basket or something. Then you need some garlic powder, one zucchini, you need eight ounces of ground beef and then one slice of bread. And then here are all of our veggies prepped up. All we needed to do was slice our zucchini into half moon shapes and then dice our potatoes because we're gonna turn those into mashed potatoes. So I put our diced potatoes into a small saucepan on the stove through some water and salt in a way that goes to boil. Now we're gonna make our sauce. So I put two tablespoons of ketchup from home, that packet of soy sauce that they supplied, and then those cherry preserves into a cup and that's it. That's all you needed. So instead of cherry preserves, all I can think about was using cranberry sauce and that just sounds so yummy to me. So now you're gonna set that aside Side, and you're just gonna add one tablespoon of water to that slice of bread. And you're just gonna pretty much smash it with a fork and that's gonna be your element of to simulate breadcrumbs that you would normally use inside of a meatball that's gonna kind of hold everything together. And then you're gonna add your ground beef and half your packet of garlic powder and then some salt and pepper and mix everything up and give it a good toss. And then once you're all done, you're just gonna go ahead and roll your meatballs. It's always super hard for me to explain how much you should grab I mean the meatball should be about one inch by one inch when you're done with it but that's pretty much just like a very hefty pinch full and you're just gonna roll the meat in between the palm of your hands until you have small little tiny meatballs you can see I only got eight here out of that whole mixture so it really was only four meatballs per lunch serving but I feel like with everything else it was still super filling so once you get your meatballs onto that sheet pan you're just gonna coat it with a basting brush I didn't flip it over and do the bottoms i just did as much as i could of all of the tops before you stick them in the oven you'll still have some extra for dipping that's just what you use to kind of give it a little bit of flavor while it's cooking you're going to add your zucchini to the other side of that sheet pan a little salt pepper and olive oil give it a good toss and then away into the oven that that goes the house smelled amazing it smelled so much like fall that cherry is very very similar to cranberry so it just it really had the fall feels so while it was cooking our potatoes were done and I followed their instructions by adding one tablespoon of butter I added the sour cream that they provided and then we're also going to throw in a little bit of that garlic powder that was left over and we're gonna give it a good whip now they do not suggest that you add any kind of milk they always suggest that you use the water that comes from the actual potatoes like using the potato starchy water I don't like that that. I like to throw in a little bit of my own milk or cream just to give it a more of a creamy whipped consistency but that's more up to you guys what you choose to do but once you're all done and mixing that all together then we're going to go ahead and pull our meatballs and zucchini from the stove 
look how yummy those cooked up but i will tell you that it's a very sugary sauce so you can see it kind of burned a little bit on the bottom there was no burnt flavor but i would spray your pan really good or put some kind of wax paper down but i put a little bit of that sauce on the bottom plate and the meatballs with those garlicky mashed potatoes and the zucchini was cooked perfectly like this was a yummy perfect lunch for me that was a perfect set of portion control i wasn't hungry but i wasn't stuffed it was really really super good and obviously you guys can always do that on a larger scale for dinner all right our next recipe is risotto you guys and i've mentioned to you before that i absolutely love risotto so when every plate puts it on as a weekly option i grab it and this one had roasted tomatoes and pork sausage so that sounded so good so you need two roma tomatoes some chicken stock concentrate a small yellow onion some sweet italian pork sausage some aborio rice which is what you need to make risotto some chives and some parmesan cheese that is it so here are our chives cut our garlic garlic diced, our half of onion diced, and our tomato, Roma tomatoes we put into a wedge. That's all we needed to do for our produce. It's obviously a given to wash your produce when you do any of these kits. And so now on a sheet pan, I have our sausage and then our tomato wedges, a little bit of some olive oil, salt and pepper, and off to the oven that they go. And then now with some olive oil, I put our onions in the bottom of a pan to kind of sweat and get aromatic and then I put our arborio rice in there and just kind of mix it up a little bit until it started to turn brown like the way rice aroni is and then now you're going to take that chicken stock concentrate and you're going to put it in water and you're going to get two full cups of water and you're going to put little by little into the risotto every five minutes add a little bit more and you keep mixing it down and mixing it down until you get this super creamy texture once it's done you're going to throw in your chives, your parm cheese, your tomatoes that you roasted out of the oven, and then a tablespoon of butter. That's it. So stinking simple. It does take time to make risotto. You have to nurse it. Like I said, every couple of minutes, you have to add that fluid and keep bringing it to that consistency where it gets creamy to kind of break it down. But that's it, you guys. Once you're done with that rice, you load it onto the plate. You cut your sausage on a diagonal. All you need to do was bake it in the oven with that a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. So I just kind of sliced it and laid it on top of that creamy roasted tomato and garlicky with the parmesan cheese and the chives like the risotto was so good and the sausage was just enough heartiness i absolutely adored this dish and i've mentioned to you guys before that i love risotto so i highly recommend it and so easy if you have the time to nurse that rice this was definitely one hands down and again how long did that take besides the rice super simple all right now we're on to a recipe with gouda when i saw this one i was like yes give me the gouda and bacon and it's gouda and bacon smothered chicken so we have some smoked paprika some gouda cheese some chicken breasts some green beans two yukon gold potatoes and bacon that's it, you guys. Like, look how minimal their ingredients are. And then do you see what we're making? So I diced up their potatoes and threw them on a sheet pan, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, off to the oven that they went. And then now we're just gonna get our bacon cooked and we really want that grease because we're gonna use that later. I absolutely love their bacon. I mentioned this all the time as well, but all of their meat is super flavorful. It's just very, very yummy and it always cooks up well. It's always super fresh. So while your bacon is cooking, you're just going to place your chicken on a paper towel and just make sure that you get it really pat dry because it sits you know in its own juices in the package so get it patted dry really good you're gonna salt pepper and put a little bit of that smoked paprika on each side of your chicken and then that's gonna end up getting cooked right in that pan that we're cooking that bacon in which ends up working out phenomenal because you just the bacon grease just gets inside of that chicken and you taste the bacon in every bite and it also made it super tender so make sure you flip your bacon over halfway through cooking 
cooking. So you get a good crisp on either side. And halfway through my potatoes cooking, I pulled my sheet pan back out and added my green beans, a little olive oil, salt and pepper, and then back into the oven that they went for the potatoes to finish cooking and the green beans to cook. And then now our bacon is done. So I kind of pushed it over to the side and still let it cook a little bit more while I added our chicken to that pan. And your chicken needs about five to six minutes on each side. And then you're gonna take all those bacon pieces, split them in half, layer it on top of that chicken and add the Gouda cheese and just give it some time to melt. That's it. You got roasted potatoes, roasted green beans, and a smothered bacon and Gouda cheese chicken. Like you guys, this took 20 minutes to make. And this is something that looks like it came out of a restaurant. This is why I absolutely love every plate because I ate that for lunch. Like I would have paid a stupid amount of money at a restaurant to eat that for lunch. And I felt swanky because that is quite the lunch. So I am very, very impressed with whoever makes up their menu because i feel like they find ways to give you very yummy meals that are very easy to cook with very little ingredients all right now we're on to pub burgers and these are stuffed jalapeno popper burgers but they're pork i think that using pork for a burger is almost ingenious because sometimes we're just sick of beef right you want to kind of switch it up a little bit and it's a really simple concept on how we're going to stuff these burgers. And I think that if you don't like what you stuff this with, you can change the game, but do it the same way. So they always give us amazing brioche bro rolls. So I have that as well as three Yukon Gold potatoes, one jalapeno, some mozzarella, one lime, the ground pork, some cream cheese, and then some more smoked paprika. And that is it, you guys. So as far as doing our prep work we need to put our potatoes in wedges we need to zest and quarter our lime and we need to chop our jalapeno that's it so our potato wedges are going to go onto a sheet pan with some olive oil a little salt and pepper you're going to give them a good toss and then off to the oven that they go i love how simple it is to make potato wedges like i'm no longer intimidated you're gonna put your jalapenos into a little bowl and then you're just gonna squeeze in half of that lime and then we're gonna put in some water. We're basically making a little mini pickled jalapeno and unbelievable, as yummy as that was, you guys, water, lime juice, jalapenos, so good. Now we're gonna take some salt, some pepper, our cream cheese and that mozzarella, and we're gonna kind of mix it all together. And that's what's going inside of our ground pork. So I put our ground pork into a bowl and you're just going to add the lime zest to that, hello, and a little bit of the smoked paprika along with salt and pepper. And you're gonna give that a good mix. And then you're gonna make four patties out of it. So you want very, very thin patties because we're essentially only making two two burgers. So you're going to make four patties and then we're going to layer that yummy cream cheese mixture that we made inside of it. So make sure you make four nice thin patties. So once you stack them together and you form around it, it's not a huge burger. And then you're going to take that mixture, divide it completely in half and stick it on your burgers. Take the other one, put it right on top. And I used a fork just to kind of seal the edges, almost like you were making a pie. And I made sure to just go around all of it until no cheese was going to leak out. And it's not like you're putting it on a barbecue in an open flame. We were putting it right in a frying pan onto the stove. So I knew I was gonna be able to control if anything oozed out. Now we're gonna make our side sauce. So we're gonna put some more lime zest, that paprika, some lime juice, and just some ketchup from home in a little bowl holy cow what adding lime juice and lime zest to ketchup it was a really nice controversy of flavor i loved it and it was a great dipping sauce so now like i said we're gonna put our burgers right in a frying pan that has a little bit of olive oil five to six minutes on each side and then once they're ready and good to go you're gonna put your buns in that same Pan. So if any of that cheese leaked out, which you can see a tiny bit did, I kind of put it underneath 
where I was putting the brioche rolls. This way, even though some leaked out, you were still getting it in every bite. And so I went ahead and toasted the rolls. You put your burger on top. Our potato wedges was done. You have the lime zesty ketchup and then those pickled jalapenos with a wedge of lime on the side. What a difference. And that burger, when you bit into it, the cream cheese and like that mozzarella cheese was just dripping down the side. The bun was so buttery and crispy. And those are potato wedges, you guys, that we made with olive oil, salt, and pepper and cutting a potato. That's it. Like, why are we buying frozen potatoes from the store when really all we need to do is crank up the heat and put our potatoes on a pan with a little bit of seasoning and off into the oven that they go. But again, how is that for a lunch? That's why I love using this for lunches in our house because I feel like I eat <laughs> extremely, extremely well thanks to every plate for a very small cost like this you guys garlicky white sauce flatbreads like now you're talking my language because i don't really like pizza so this is my kind of pizza so we need aroma tomato some garlic some zucchini and then we have a bunch of seasonings here so we needed some red chili pepper flakes we needed a garlic powder and then we also needed some italian seasoning and then that is it you guys so here is everything we needed prepped we have our zucchini cut in half moon shapes our aroma tomato is sliced in moon shapes as well and then we have our garlic that we put in some olive oil in some tin foil because we're roasting it and that is my favorite thing that every plate reminded me how easy it is to do and how well that flavor works with so many things so we're gonna stick that on a sheet pan with our zucchini you can see zucchini is a very popular side dish for them and I don't mind because it's really turned me on to how much I love that vegetable and so a little bit of that Italian seasoning with some olive oil salt and pepper you're gonna give it a good good toss and then we're going to just go ahead and stick that in the oven now make sure not to use a lot of italian seasoning on there because we're also going to use the italian seasoning in those tomatoes so we're gonna put those tomatoes into a bowl and we're gonna go and use a little, they didn't suggest olive oil, but I put a little tiny bit of olive oil in there and then the rest of your Italian seasoning. And you're gonna let those sit off to the side and marinate the whole time that the rest of the stuff is cooking. So once your zucchini is ready, I just took it out off the pan and put it into a bowl. And then we're gonna take our roasted garlic and we're gonna dice it up into pieces because that's gonna end up being layered on top of our flatbread. And now you're going to take those marinated tomatoes and you're going to mix it in with that zucchini. So that is going to go on top of these flatbreads with this garlicky sauce that we make and that roasted garlic. Like, hello. So now let's stick our flatbread in onto that pan and into the oven to get a little bit toasty. And then we're going to throw garlic powder, a little bit of flour and some butter into a pan. And you're going to make a garlicky roux, right? Which just imagine how yummy that's going to be. And then you're going to take that cream cheese. I don't know why that it's so amazing to me that they use cream cheese the way that they do because I've never done it like that and watch what it does. Now you add that little bit of cream cheese to that roux that you made and a little bit of water and watch what it makes like this really yummy sauce and look how amazing these pans are. I'll link them in the description box but I've showed you guys these pans before like nothing sticks to it but that cheesy mixture was like a quick Alfredo and it's just so good. So now you can see that our flatbreads are toasty and I just smell smeared that white garlicky yummy delicious sauce on top of it and then now we're going to layer it with our toppings now paul right now is home with me for lunch usually hubby and i will do something different on the days that he's home and paul is like anti any kind of vegetable so you'll see that there's no vegetables going on his flatbread all the zucchini and tomatoes went on mine and that's okay i was all for it so i put on his you just saw that roasted garlic went on top of his side and then i put some roasted garlic on top of mine and then we're we're gonna take the mozzarella that they gave us and we're gonna cover the pizza and then back in the oven it goes just for two minutes to get melty and blam that's what you got let me tell you how that was the best darn lunch I had had since I left New York because I am very finicky when it comes to my pizza and this is pizza to be proud of and I made it in my house and that's why I love the flatbreads from Trader Joe's because they're just like what every plate sends and it is so easy to make any kind of pizza your heart desires on the kind of platform that that flatbread is but I think I made it better than their picture and that 
rarely ever happens but you guys this was so so good and again that's why i absolutely love every plate so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up again my link for every plate is always in the description box if you want to go ahead and give them a try thank you guys so much for watching i love you guys all so much subscribe if you are new and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys